Hello everybody, I'm here with Jennifer Roy Francoli and she is from the Art of Freedom for Musicians. You can find her at artoffreedom.me. Uh, she is a violinist, also a Baroque violinist and an Alexander Technique teacher. And in this interview, we're going to talk about how to play the violin comfortably without pain. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Thanks Jennifer, so again. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lada. It's really a delight to be back. Good. So, yeah, so I guess I'll just dive in. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been teaching and playing the violin for, well, I've been playing for my whole life. I'm a professional violinist. And I've been teaching the violin at Alexander Technique for many years, and I teach at a conservatory of music. I've played in dozens of orchestras over decades. And so I've come into contact with many, many musicians in my life. <laughs> and whether they're beginners or elite professionals, it doesn't matter a person's skill level. Unfortunately, pain related to music making is really common. And pain has a wide range, of course. Um, in, in the Conservatory of Music in Cincinnati, <clears throat> my students would often come to me um, for an Alexander Technique lesson because they had tendinitis or rotator cuff issues or carpal tunnel or <clears throat> I had one student, excuse me, one student with TMJ, jaw issues, she was about to have surgery. Wow. So unfortunately, this is very common, and there are lots of research studies that you can Google, uh, find on the web about orchestral musicians and how it's a very high percentage. Um, some studies say like 85% yeah. of, of orchestral musicians are in pain. And another interesting fact is that they don't want to talk about it. So musicians are very shy about revealing <coughs> their discomfort and their their stress. You know, phys it's not just physical pain. There's a lot of emotional pain as well. There's a lot of depression and performance anxiety in professionals as well as beginners. Again, it doesn't matter your skill level. Yeah. But unfortunately, there's just a lot of suffering. <laughs> yeah, of suffering. certainly. Yeah, the majority so, of musicians are in pain and uh, uh, also certainly in high pressure environments like a conservatory and orchestra it's really taboo because you know if you uh, if you tell it then people are afraid to lose their job or to not uh, uh, pass an exam but you know even for uh, or certainly also for amateurs uh, they can't uh, i heard from people who can't play for 10 minutes that's right and there are a lot of people who have to stop playing yeah. And I've had experience with this myself when I was a college student. Um, there was a, a short period, thankfully, where I got shooting pain in my arm that would go up my pinky and I literally couldn't press on my pinky. So mm -hmm. I know what that's like. It's very scary. Um, you start to worry about your future. Are you going to be able to play? Are you going to need surgery? Is that going to ruin your hand? I mean, there, there's so much fear and worry and frustration because... You don't know what the future holds for you, whether you'll get better or worse. You don't really know what to do it, about it. You go, to, you maybe go to professionals, doctors, chiropractors, all kinds of maybe alternative therapies, and those can help. However, I haven't come across anything as effective as Alexander Technique to really get to the source of the problem, because most therapies don't address the whole person. Yeah. And even if they do address the whole person, <laughs> the ones that I have found are not actually teaching you how to take care of yourself, how to start healing yourself, and how to prevent recurrences if you're already in pain, or how to prevent pain if you're lucky enough not to have discomfort. Yeah. Um, so those are the things that um, are invaluable. You know, when you can learn to take charge of your own experience and know what to do. It's just so rare. And musicians, like you said, they're afraid to even tell people if they're employed as musicians. They don't want people to know. Yeah, yeah. It's a real problem and it's very prevalent. Yeah, and but what you mentioned, I think is also important that Alexander Techniques uh, refers to lessons that you get and not to a therapy. I think that's uh, maybe an important distinction. It's very, very important. It can be therapeutic for sure, 
But Alexander Technique is an educational method. It is not a therapy. You don't go to an Alexander teacher to be treated. You go to learn. <laughs> you actually will most likely feel way better. So it may feel like a treatment, but along the way, you're actually learning what you can do on your own. And you know, there are very diff there are a lot of different ways to learn the Alexander Technique. And the way I do it is is kind of cutting edge because I do most of it online now. Mm -hmm. I've learned, I'm interested in how Alexander himself, he was an actor and had a performance issue himself, he got hoarse. Um, he learned how to solve his performance problem and his discomfort by himself. And he did it by experimenting and observing himself, getting to know his habit. He got to know what he was doing to himself to cause the problem. And then he, over a long period of time, figured out how to solve his own problem. And he did. So he cured the voice problem he had. And then he was able to teach other people how to cure their or to deal with their issues, whatever they were. And it wasn't until much later, it was like after 17 years of teaching his methodology that he then started using his hands. So it was for a long time that the Alexander Technique was a hands-off, <laughs> just a communication method. Yeah. So I'm curious about how Alexander taught himself without a teacher. Yeah. What was his thought process? And that's what I'm helping other people to realize that you have so much power in your mind. Your mind is so powerful to make changes in your body. You have no idea how powerful the mind is. And it's really simple, actually, once you realize that it takes observation, it takes a little bit of patience, it takes a will to take care of yourself mm -hmm. and your well-being first. And But if you learn those skills, you have them for life and you can apply this knowledge of how to integrate yourself in the best way possible, and you can apply that to anything you do, you know, playing your violin, or going on stage and being comfortable in front of an audience, or walking down the street. You know, anything, any activity where you use your body improves because you know how to use your mind in a, in a healthy way. Yeah. Destructive. Yeah. And it's, some people might uh, uh, not be able to um, have a clear picture of what, what this means, but your mind is actually steering, controlling what you do with your body. Uh, the only thing is we do a lot of things unconsciously. So a lot of tension, a lot of wrong things, things that you do uh, are done unconsciously. So you don't know that you're doing them, but your mind is doing them. So it's as you say, a matter of being conscious and uh, learning how to 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 do the change that. Yeah, and that's right. And I'm curious if would you be interested in just a couple minutes of an experiment right now? Sure. Where I'd I uh, glad to be the guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> I have my violin here, by the way. So uh... we actually don't need the violin because it's oh. really about what we're doing with the, the mind and the body. But let's just try something out and see what happens. Cool. Everything we do is an experiment with yeah. Alexander. And so we'll see. So right now, as lot as I'm talking with you, the first question I always ask is, what do you notice about your body right now as you're sitting there? Um, what do I notice? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm doing my best to sit up straight. So, it, <laughs> so can you be more specific about what you're doing with your body to sit up straight? Um, yeah, I'm uh, uh, using the muscles of my uh, uh, my abs and my back to not sit like this. And okay, great. So I let's try something. What would happen if you really exaggerate what you're doing right now? Yeah, right. I bet other people watching are doing this too right now. Yeah. <laughs> <They watch Yeah. laughs> right? Because we reflect what we see. Okay, so if you really exaggerate it, can you imagine if you stayed there for a long time, what would happen? I'd probably fall down on the floor and... Uh... <laughs> well, do you realize that you, you don't want to hold that, so you yeah. keep coming back here. So if you did that for a long time, you'd probably start to hurt. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Yeah. And so did, right now as you're sitting there, do you notice any tension related to you know, what we just did? Mm, yeah, I can feel my back. Uh, so uh, somewhere around my shoulder... Uh, well, actually, where you're, I don't know the name of muscle, so certainly not in English. <laughs> so it's actually, 
in in the bra area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so around the shoulder blades, yeah. upper middle back, there's a little tightening there, right? Okay, so you feel that. Okay, now let's try something else. Now, scan your body. Just take a moment. Is there a place in your body where you feel less touch? My legs, I think. Okay. Right. So there's relatively less tension in your legs and relatively more tension in your back. And so both places, they're, they're different, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, is there another place in your body that's relatively easy or comfortable right now? Mm, my hands? Right, so you've got relative ease in your hands. Now here's a question, what happens if you bring your attention again to that pain, or not pain, but like tension in your back? Mm -hmm. All right, and what? And now go ahead and move your arms while you're paying attention to the tension. If you pay attention to the tension, what happens? Just feel what that's like. Good. And then stop. And now pay attention to the ease. Where do you notice ease right now? Uh, I think my arms and hands and legs. Okay, great. So notice that, that ease in your legs right now. Good. And you're starting to breathe a little more freely. I just saw that change. Oh. So, <laughs> so notice the ease in your legs. And just get curious about the ease in the legs as you move your arms again up and down. Yeah, just watch the ease in your legs. Yeah. Good. What's that like? I think I move differently. Yeah. Can you say how? I, I think it was different too. I could see it was yeah. really different. Yeah. How was it different? I think when I focused on my back, I moved more like a robot. Uh -huh. And I think when I focused on my legs, it became more fluent. Yes, that's what I saw too. So here's my question. If you use your arms to play the violin, would it be more helpful to be noticing ease while you're playing and moving your arms? Or noticing tension in yourself while you're playing and moving your arms? Well, ease, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like a no brainer <laughs> However, people who are in pain, who are in pain, are very good at bringing their attention to pain. And when you're noticing pain and you're paying attention to pain or any kind of discomfort in your body, any tension, when your attention goes to tension, you are increasing tension. And then your movement gets more difficult. Your vibrato is going to be harder. Your wrist is going to be stiffer. It's going to be harder to do anything with your arms and your fingers if you are focusing on tension. Whereas there's a very quick and simple shift that you can make, which you just did beautifully. Zlata. That was great. And I'm sure everybody who's, who tried this was also able to do this watching the video. Yeah. It's really simple, but it's not, a, not something we've ever practiced before. This is a skill. It's a, an attention skill that actually requires practice to be able to do this while you're doing a complex skill like playing the violin, which is why we start without the violin with Alexander Technique. Mm -hmm. and so we strengthen this connection between the mind and the body in the context of noticing ease. And then your movements in general can get easier when you know how to do that. Then you can apply that to playing your violin and everything you do with the violin is easier. Yeah. So pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. The mind is so powerful. Yeah. We learn how to use it constructively. Yeah, it's perhaps simple, but but not easy. As I think, if you're in pain, your intention goes naturally. I think to the pain. Uh, that's just how our brain is wired. So I think it's it, it may be difficult for people to rewire it to um, uh, to noticing what's relaxed and what feels where you feel ease. You're right. It is natural for the brain. We are wired for survival. The brain is designed to pay. I think it's five to eight times as much attention to what's kind of out of place or wrong than things that are just fine and normal. Yeah. So that's normal. If you pay attention to your tension and pain, that's normal. However, it's not helpful because what you focus on, you get more of. If you focus on pain and tension, you are increasing that or you're prolonging the cycle. You're preventing your healing. You're slowing it down. Yeah. And whereas if you bring your attention to what's going on well, that in fact, it actually, it is simple, but it's also, this is the truth, it's really easy. 
yeah. these last we've never even met before today. We've never worked together, and you were able to yeah. do it like that. Now, you're not in a lot of pain. So people who are watching who are in a lot of pain may think, oh, but I have all this pain. I can't do that. I challenge anybody watching here to do this little exercise that we did of switching the attention. And if you need help, you know where to find me. I'm online all over the place. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to help anybody. But in my experience, and I have free stuff on Facebook, so you don't have to pay for the help either. Um, but in my experience, even people with a a lot of pain, old pain, can make this shift and learn how to do it very quickly, like within a day or two, that quickly I'm talking about. Yeah. What is, what is not easy, and this is the truth, what is not easy is to remember to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why you need support in a community and other people who are working on this too, because we help each other to remind each other Oh, yes, I don't want pain. I need to redirect my attention. Oh, yeah, there's ease because the ease is always there. But if you're in a lot of pain at first, you may need to give it a little bit of time for it to show up. And yeah, that means I think it's, something. you know, also important to know that uh, it's possible to play the violin. Even it's impossible to play very well without uh, ease. Um, but but I think a lot of mainly beginners or people who play for a couple of years, they have the idea that they have to work hard or something. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that it's is something, so. you know, it's no construction building or so. <laughs> right. I understand. And a lot of it stems from a fear of dropping the violin, I've discovered. Okay. And the fact that our violins go up here. And one of Alexander's major discoveries was that the head neck area is primary to all of our coordination. So all of your tension passes through the neck. It yeah. starts at this here. And so if you're clamping your violin in there, you are just, even before you make a note, you're compromising the ease in your system. You're compromising your coordination. So yeah. the very first step, I just taught a, a new student yesterday, a beginner adult for the first time. We spent almost the whole lesson creating an ergonomic setup that would help her to have the violin there so it's just there and she doesn't have to clamp. Yeah. You're tightening here, forget it. And I would say 99% of violinists that I've ever met in my entire life are doing too much here. Yeah, certainly. So that's it's a huge, big deal yeah. to learn how to hold your violin without disturbing all of this so that your head is free and your shoulder is free and your violin is free. Great. But you can learn that. And if people learn it soon, early, it's so much easier than yeah. undoing it later. Yeah, of course. I think this is a great uh, taste of your work, a great tip of the iceberg, and uh, would love to refer people to other stuff you uh, share. You have a Facebook community, you've got a lot of free lessons and stuff online. So uh, I'll mention all of them in the description below. And well, that's it for today. And I would like to thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge and experience. And I hope this is very useful for my uh, viewers. Yeah, thank you so much, Lata. It's been such a pleasure to talk with you and share this work. Thank you. Great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.